chapter 19, verses 1 through 6. On the third new moon, after the Israelites had gone out of the land of Egypt, on that very day, they came into the wilderness of Sinai. They had journeyed from Rephidim, entered the wilderness of Sinai, and camped in the wilderness. Israel camped there in front of the mountain. And then Moses went up to God. The Lord called to him from the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, and tell the Israelites, You've seen what I did to the Egyptians. How I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now therefore, if you obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession out of all the people. Indeed, the whole earth is mine, but you shall be for me a priestly kingdom and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak the Israelites. Now we turn to the book, the Acts of the Apostles, the Acts of the Holy Spirit. We look at Exodus chapter 8, verses 14 through 17. Now when the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. The two went down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet the Spirit had not come upon any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John laid their hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. God bless to our understanding these beautiful words of Holy Scripture. Today's sermon is titled, Entering the Royal Priesthood. Immediately before he ascended into heaven, says Luke in the book of Acts 1-6, Jesus was asked a very important question by his disciples. Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? Jesus replied, provides the outline for the entire book of Acts. Jesus says, it is not for you to know the times and periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea, and Samaria, and in the ends of the earth. The first seven chapters of Acts tell the story of Pentecost and the growth of the church in Jerusalem. However, in chapter 8, with the dispersion of the disciples throughout the countryside of Judea and Samaria, following the martyrdom of Stephen, the story of the spread of the church beyond Jerusalem begins. Philip, one of the seven deacons, takes the gospel to the city of Samaria. So there was great joy in that city, we are told in Acts 8. When Peter hears that the Samaritans have been baptized into the church of Jesus Christ, he, accompanied by John, rushes from Jerusalem to Samaria to greet the new brethren. Peter and John lay hands on the Samaritan believers, and they are seen <coughs> the Holy Spirit, we are told in Acts. Thus began a great tradition of welcoming new believers into the church. This tradition extends to today, of course. We warmly welcome with 
a smile, a word of greeting, and a handshake or a hug. All visitors and new members who enter our fellowship. Remember, these were Samaritans. These were not Jews. This was a new group of people entering the church. And John and Peter went to greet them. Being a mortal man, Peter, the Apostle Peter, knew that he would not be able physically to welcome every new member of the church across the vastness of space and time. Yet, as Christ's own ambassador, he wanted in some way to be present as each new member entered the fellowship of Christian believers body of Christ, the saints of Jesus Christ. He wanted to be there. He couldn't be there physically, so you know what he did? He wrote words of greeting to each one of us. And Peter's beautiful words of greeting to new Christians have been preserved for us in our Bibles. Yes, they're found in the very book known as the First Epistle of Peter. First Epistle of Peter. Peter's greeting to all of us. Listen to the first verses of First Peter. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ to the exiles of the dispersion in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, who have been chosen by God the Father and sanctified by the Spirit to be obedient to Jesus Christ and to be sprinkled with his blood. May grace and peace be yours in abundance. First two verses of Peter's first epistle. Now it's interesting to know that it was a practice in the early church to read 1 Peter during the baptismal services in which new believers were welcomed into the church. What must that experience have been like, we wonder? Today we shall see, at least in our imagination, what it was like. Today we shall experience alongside our first and second century brethren, a welcome into the royal priesthood, the church of Jesus Christ. This is what it was like. We're gathered at the riverbank, facing east toward the rising sun. We are poor peasants, slaves of pagan masters, we are dressed in rags. It's dawn on Easter morning. We're entering a new life in Jesus Christ through baptism. We're dying to sin and we are being born again into a new life in Jesus Christ. We are entering the royal priesthood, the church of Jesus Christ. The presiding elder steps forward and greets us with the words of St. Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ by his great mercy. He's given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable. Sanctified undefiled, unfading, kept in heaven for you who are being protected by the power of God through faith for salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you've had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that though perishable, 
is tested by fire, may be found to result in glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you've not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an undescribable joy for you are receiving the outcome of your faith and the salvation of your soul. 1 Peter 1, 3 through 9. Here the presiding elder pauses a moment for us to ponder these words. Even now, even now, this all our toil and trouble and pain and suffering, we are receiving the outcome of our faith, the salvation of our soul. Even now, Jesus Christ is pouring his mercy upon us. He came to us while we are yet sinners, you see. Taking a breath of cool, crisp air, the elder continues reading the words of the Apostle Peter concerning the salvation. The prophets who prophesied the grace that was to be yours made careful search and inquiry, inquiring about the person or time and the Spirit of Christ when they looked indicated when it testified in advance to the suffering destined for Christ and the subsequent glory. It was revealed to them that they were serving not themselves, but you in regard to the things that have now been announced to you through those who brought you the good news by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. Things into which angels long to look. Again, the elder pauses to let these words sink in. Throughout the ages, the prophets inspired by the Holy Spirit have been telling us on behalf of God that a Messiah, the very Son of God, is coming to redeem us and set us free. Free from our sin. Free from our separation from God. When, O oh Lord, when? The angels themselves have asked, when, O oh Lord? Now. Now, says our God, to the messengers who have brought God's good news, the gospel to us from heaven. With heads bowed in reverence, we return our attention to the presiding elder, who now instructs us in the ways of the church. Therefore, prepare your minds for action. Discipline yourselves. Set all your hope on the grace that Jesus Christ will bring you when he is revealed. Like obedient children, do not be conformed to the desires that you formerly had in ignorance. Instead, as he who called you is holy, be holy yourselves in conduct. For it is written, you shall be holy as I am holy. In response to these instructions from the presiding elder and, of course, the Apostle Peter, we now strip off our outer garments, the tattered, torn, stained, and soiled symbols of our former selves. These we fold and lay upon the ground. We step past them toward our new lives leaving our sinful ways behind us. The elder leads us in prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power 
and the glory forever. Amen. The elder then continues to read from Peter's first epistle. If you invoke as father the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the feudal ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without effect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. My hope is built on nothing less, he said. Now the elder takes us by the hand and leads us in the water, the river, the symbol of God's living water which flows from the holy temple, throne of God. Angry, needy, wasty, we wade, feeling the cleansing water flowing around us. And one by one, the elder comes to us, pouring over our heads great handfuls of water. My brother, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. My sister, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Our bodies shiver as we feel the power of God working within us. And gently now, the elder leads us to the far shore of the river, where we are greeted by our fellow Christians. They shake our hands, they embrace us, they cover our bodies with gleaming white robes, symbols of our new lives in Jesus Christ. We have been reborn. Our old lives have ended, we are newborns. We are infants in Jesus Christ. Then says the elder, again quoting from 1 Peter, Now that you have purified your souls by obedience to truth, so that you have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart. You've been born of you, not of perishable but of imperishable seed through the living and enduring word of God. For all flesh is like grass and its glory like the flower of grass. The grass withers, the flower falls, but the word of the Lord endures forever. That word is the good news that was announced to you. Rid yourselves, therefore, of all matter and all guile and insincerity and envy and slander, like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Our brethren now bring to us bowls of milk to drink symbolizing God's nourishment for his new children. By the hand, they can lead us to the communion table, where we're to be fed with solid food, with the bread and wine of the sacrament. And says the elder, quoting from Peter, Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. Like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. 
for it stands in scripture see i am laying in zion a stone a cornerstone chosen and precious whoever believes in him will not be put to shame to you then who believe he is precious but for those who do not believe the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner and a stone that makes them stumble a rock that makes them fall they stumble as they disobey the word as they were destined to do but you are a chosen race a royal priesthood a holy nation God's own people, in order that you might proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. As Moses long ago proclaimed the covenant between God and his chosen people and sealed it with the sacrifice of blood, now the elder leads us and the proclamation of the new covenant. Sealed with the blood of God's own sacrifice, the Lamb without blemish, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior. Take, eat, this is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. This cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the saving death of the risen Lord until he comes. Having taken communion, we now kneel in humble submission before God, and the elder pronounces the charge and the benediction. Again, using the words of the Apostle Peter. Once you were not a people, but now you're God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Beloved, I urge you as aliens and exiles to abstain from the desires of the flesh that wage war against the soul. Conduct yourselves honorably among the Gentiles, so that though they malign you as evildoers, they may see your honorable deeds and glorify God when he comes to judge. It is finished. It is completed. It is perfected. Sinners though we were, we've been welcomed into the royal priesthood. Through the grace and mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ, we've been redeemed We've been washed clean of our sins. We've been fed with the body and the blood of our Savior. And we are his forever. Forever. We are Christians. We are citizens of the kingdom of heaven. And though we may now be living in exile in Satan's empire of sin, we're to be ambassadors witnesses to his gospel. May God strengthen us and give us courage to stand firm in our faith, no matter what the consequences, filled with the knowledge that we belong to God and that our Lord will never, never forsake us. We've entered the royal priesthood. May God's name O risen Christ, may we who in baptism die to sin rise again to new life and find our place in your living body. May the new covenant sealed in your blood bring healing and reconciliation to this wounded world. Hallelujah, you are risen. We are risen with you. Praise and glory to the living God forever. Amen. Once you were not a people, but now God's people. Once you would not receive mercy, but now you have received mercy. 
welcome at the royal priesthood the people of God. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all both now.